What is up everyone? This is something that I really didn't see coming anytime soon. In front of me here in this box, I have the last ever 17 inch MacBook Pro. The final 17 inch MacBook Pro that Apple ever released. Today we will be unboxing it, checking out the machine, chatting about it, rambling about it, installing an SSD, installing an operating system, just full of geeky goodness today in this video, folks. So it's all about this gorgeous 17 inch MacBook Pro and I can't wait to dig in. But first of all, I just have to say a massive, huge, colossal thank you to Luke. Luke, you are awesome. Luke decided to donate this MacBook Pro to the channel completely free of charge for me to be able to make videos about it for you guys. Since Luke got his hands on a newer MacBook Pro, this one has just been gathering dust and he hasn't used it for anything so he's decided to give it to another home and I will definitely take care of it. I was very intrigued to see whether another one of these 17 inch MacBook Pros would cross my path because as some of you real old school IMNC viewers will remember, when I was in college during 2011, 2012 and 2013, I used a very similar MacBook Pro. It wasn't the final 17 inch model, it was the early 2011, so the one prior to the final model. I used a 17 inch MacBook Pro as my daily college machine. Unfortunately, because that was provided by college, I had to give it back at the end, but it was a great machine and I've always wondered whether I'd get my hands on another unibody 17 inch MacBook Pro. And it's so cool that this is the final model because this is the most powerful one they did and the newest one they did. So I'm absolutely ecstatic about this unboxing today. So before we dig in, I just have to say really quickly, Luke gave me a link to his Instagram and it's in the video description below. For those of you who are into retro gaming, go and check it out because Luke does some awesome modifications and cleaning up of consoles and stuff like that. He's got some great posts on his Instagram. Go and check it out. Give him a follow if you like what you see and you're into all of that nerdy goodness just like I am. So let's dig into this MacBook Pro. I am very, very excited today. And you're gonna have to put up with full, complete, almost kind of hyper level IMNC today, guys, because it's not every day a, a Mac as awesome as this comes through the door. So, whew, okay, I'm gonna try and control myself. Okay, so Luke did tell me that he'd used packing peanuts, but it's all good. These are the biodegradable ones, which is awesome. So thank you, Luke, for using such good packaging. Okay, let's see if we can pull out the machine and not spill these everywhere. Here we go. Wow, I forget how huge these are. I know it's in bubble wrap. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, look at this. Okay, let's put that to one side for a second. Okay, so that's it for the box. Let's have a look at the machine itself. Okay, and we're down to the final layer. <laughs> My God, it's been a while. It's been a while. I haven't held one of these bad boys in a long, long time. Oh my word. Look at the condition of this. This is immaculate. Completely immaculate. It looks gorgeous. So bottom cover's got a couple of little dings on it, but you obviously expect that from the bottom cover. Oh my word. Let's open her up and see, I'll get you a closer look in a minute guys, I'll give you a good look around the machine. Whoa, my gosh. Wow, 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 okay. Look at that. So here's a closer look at the machine. Let's open her up. And one thing that hit me straight away is just how good the screen looks. So, so good, screen looks perfect. Absolutely perfect. Coming down to the keyboard, looking wonderful. This looks like a US keyboard because there's no pound sign on the numbers and it's got the US style enter key. So looks like a US keyboard from what I can see here anyway. And coming down to the trackpad, very perfect, clean condition. Click feels nice. Dedicated power button up here. Not something I'm used to with the Retina anymore. Wow, nice thin bezels on this guy. Look at that, look at that. And 
there's the top again. <laughs> Lovely. Let's take a look around this machine. Let's see if I can show you guys with just one hand here. So for ports, we have a probably the final Apple laptop that had a really, really good array of ports. We've got MagSafe, Gigabit Ethernet, Firewire 800, Thunderbolt, three USB 2.0 ports, audio in and out, and an Express Card 34 slot. These are USB 2 ports. USB 3 was right around the corner at this point, but you can add USB 3 with a USB 3 Express Card in that slot. That's something that we might actually do for a bit of fun. So there's the battery uh, indicator, something that they've ditched. They ditched um, with the Retina models. You know, this was so handy back in the day. Really handy. So no battery in this guy. Let's turn it around. IR receiver on the front. And on this side, we of course have our optical drive slot and the Kensington lock and complete with the four feet on the bottom. So as a really quick size comparison, just here, you can see my 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro Boom, look at that, just dwarfs it, absolutely dwarfs it. So, I need to go and find a MagSafe charger. I'm gonna borrow Jess's MagSafe charger, and what I think we'll do before even powering it on is we'll put a drive in it, because there's no drive in it at the moment as far as I know. So we'll bung in an SSD, and I'll go and get Jess's MagSafe. This requires probably an 85 watt MagSafe. I've only got a 60 because Jess's MacBook Pro is 13 inch. Uh, I believe I only have a 60 watt as well upstairs in the attic, but I can order an 85 watt charger for this. That's not a problem at all. And a 60 watt charger should get us up and running now, I believe. So I hope that sort of side on camera angle is okay for you guys. I'm currently downloading a copy of macOS High Sierra in order to make a USB drive to reinstall the OS on this guy. So for an OS install, we need a drive and I have dug out my, where have I put it? My trusty Samsung 830, 250 gig, 256 gig, sorry. That would be quite an appropriate SSD to put in this machine from a relatively similar-ish era. The SSD is a bit newer, but it's exactly the type of SSD we've been buying a couple of years after buying this MacBook in order to upgrade it. So this has probably got a 750 gig hard drive in it or would have originally had a 750 gig hard drive in it unless it was configured otherwise at the ordering stage. My 17 inch MacBook Pro back in the day had a 750 gig hard drive, a 5400 RPM one as well. You could um, get a 7200 RPM as a build to order option or an SSD. Uh, when my machine was ordered, it was ordered with an additional four gigs of RAM for a total of eight gigs, but the storage was left unchanged. But it always ran really well. Uh, I ran Snow Leopard on it, and did I upgrade to Lion later on? I can't remember, but it ran really well and um, saw me through those two years of college really well. It was a great machine, and I lugged it around all that time. So it is quite nostalgic for me to actually get one of these again. And surprisingly with these machines, they still to this day, I had a quick look on eBay yesterday, they still to this day really hold their value. Being the most powerful 17 inch MacBook Pro, if you want a 17 inch notebook from Apple, this is your last option. And for that reason, they still command quite a bit of money. They've still really held on to their value for a good few years. You were paying a crazy amount of money for one of these right up until just a couple of years ago, but they've dropped ever so slightly now. But this being a Sandy Bridge machine is still incredibly capable. It it will be not that much slower, oh, forgot one screw, it won't be that much slower than my MacBook Pro, to be honest, there won't be a lot in it. This is also higher clock speed. This would be a 2.4 gigahertz machine, I believe, whereas mine's a two gigahertz 2013 model. Okie dokie. Do you know something, folks? I've just realized that we, because there's no drive in here, we're gonna need the torque screws that are meant to hold this into place. Sorry if you can hear that drilling noise next door, guys. I've got no idea what they're doing. Um, but yeah, just we're gonna have to live with it for now. Um, so normally with a drive in here, you would have um, four Torx T6 screws to hold the drive in. They're not present, so this bracket may 
hold it down. Let's have a little look and see if just this bracket alone will hold the drive in place. If not, we could always, um, this is a really lightweight SSD, so we could just put a little bit of double-sided tape in here or something like that. Or maybe I could try and get my hands on some screws that would fit. So let's have a look. Plug this guy in. There we go. So yes, down there. Oh look, you probably don't even need probably don't even need the screws. Let's have a look. Fits in there nice and snug. I think this retention bar actually grips onto those T6 screws, so this might just fall out once that's back in place. Or not. Yes, it does actually. It's not holding it in. Look, I'll try and find some T6 screws. For now, that'll kind of just flop about in there a little bit. Um, trying to think if there's anything we can put on top to just stop it from hitting the bottom of the case. What I'm going to do, guys, is use this foam double-sided tape. I'm not going to remove um, the top side of it. I'm just going to use it as a spacer to build up the height of the drive a little bit. I don't want to stick anything to the bottom of the machine if I can avoid it, because sometimes the residue is really difficult to get off these. But if we just build it up height-wise a little bit, it'll make it sit in the machine a bit better until I can get some screws. There we go, that's the same height as the battery now. And we'll do the same on the other side. I probably do have a bit of foam or something somewhere that would do this. A bit of a neater job, but... This is just to get this up and running today and working for the video. What we could do in the future then is make a further video about this guy where I get some drive screws and I also maybe upgrade the RAM. I believe this has got eight gigs in it now. It'll take up to 16, so it might be quite fun for us to upgrade the RAM. Um, yeah, there we go. That's it. That's all we need to do. If there was um, some juice in the battery, it'd be a good idea to unplug the battery before doing that, by the way, or a good, a good practice in general to... Uh, uh, change the battery but when do I ever follow the rules unplug the battery sorry not change the battery that's another thing we'll see the battery health on this guy maybe it could do the new battery because this type of machine is actually worth spending money on this guy the position that I'm in at the moment using my MacBook Pro as my main machine this is a fully viable spare if my MacBook Pro blows up I could drop this right into the setup and comfortably use it day to day it doesn't run the latest version of Mac OS that's not really a problem because I've only just literally recently upgraded to Mojave. I'm not even running Catalina. I've been running not even High Sierra. I've been running Sierra on my MacBook for the last few years. So I'm very accustomed to running not the latest OS. And um, as I say, performance-wise, this guy would be an absolute tank. So there's the bottom cover screwed completely back on. We are now ready and... That SSD is not wobbling around, which is good. I've got a version of High Sierra downloading, like I said, and as soon as it's ready, I can make a USB stick to install this guy. I'll go and grab a charger to get some juice into the battery before that, just in case it takes a little bit longer with the 60-watt uh, charger, which it definitely will. By the way, guys, my lovely screwdriver set, I managed to um, break the mechanism so it no longer operates properly and closes, which is a pain in the ass. These cases are cool, but... When they go wrong, it's uh, it's a complete pain. So yeah, that's that's my sadness for this week. But this MacBook Pro more than makes up for it. Oh my gosh. Okay, folks, I have left this laptop plugged into power for about an hour while I've been fiddling with creating a High Sierra USB installer. So High Sierra on this USB stick. Let's pop it in and let's boot up the machine. The SSD is already erased. I put it in my hard drive toaster before putting it in the machine just to get rid of anything that was still lurking on that drive because it's been in a hackintosh. Might do some weird stuff on the uh, machine itself. Oh and look you can see a reflection of me in the screen so I better not itch my nose too much. <laughs> okay let's power this guy on. Here we go. Woo! Okay we have a bong and we also have Okie dokie, we ha okay, we've got some stripes on the screen, some purple stripes. I don't know how well that's coming out on camera. Yeah, you can see them, you can see them. Okay, so this machine, hey, we have an Apple logo and a loading bar, so it's seen the installer from my USB stick. So let's chat a little bit about the graphics side of things for a second. So Luke purchased this machine used in 2013, I believe, and used it successfully for a long while until the graphics chip eventually died, as they all do in these 2011 MacBook Pros, unfortunately. 
He managed to get it repaired under the Apple extended program for the graphics repair on these guys. So he got it repaired, had the machine back. It worked for a very short amount of time. I can't remember whether he said six months or six weeks. I'll have to look back at the email, but a very short amount of time in the grand scheme of things anyway. And then the machine started messing up again. And by that time, Apple's program had finished and they were no longer repairing these machines under the extended warranty. So um, Luke was never able to get this machine repaired again by Apple, but he did inform me in an email that since then it has always worked 90% of the time. And I kind of really sympathize with this because when I had that 2008 Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Pro, sorry, I've still got it actually. Um, I experienced a very similar thing, you know, 90% of the time it worked but a lot of the time, well, 10% of the time, it, it didn't. So um, yeah, let's see how far we get with this machine. It's been sat for a while unused, and we do have some stripes on the screen here. So that does indicate a little bit of a problem with the old graphics chip here. The 2011 machines and graphics problems, you know, that's uh, a big can of worms, but we'll take it one step at a time here and see See how far we get along the installer. Okay, this is where we're at now. The loading bar got about two thirds of the way along and we've now got this sort of grayish, bluish screen and the activity LED on the pen drive has stopped flashing. So I'm gonna wait here just a second. This does not look like the correct screen for the beginning of an installer. But I'm going to give it just a minute because I'm not going to rush this. May just need some time, so I'm going to wait it out. So I don't think this MacBook Pro is doing much at the moment. I'm going to restart it and see if we can get it to fire up. What I've done in the meantime is I've started the creation of another High Sierra USB stick over on my main machine. And, you know, just in case, problem with the, the drive or the previous creation of the bootable installer. Always good to have plenty of options. Now I'm using USB 2.0 drives. This is a USB 2.0 port. So it's slower than what we're used to these days. But still, when it arrives at that screen, I am pretty sure it's not doing a great deal. Hey, we've got a completely clear screen. Apple logo on the screen. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so there's still no pink lines. Um, it's looking a lot healthier. Well, I was not expecting this after what happened first time round. She actually booted up. So, let's go for it. Language, English. Oh, we have to click, don't we? This is looking a lot healthier. Okay, let's install macOS. I've already freshly erased the SSD, so we don't need to jump into disk utility. Look at the resolution, guys. Everything is always so tiny on the 17 inch. Absolutely love it. Mac OS High Sierra, continue, agree, agree, SSD, okay, nice, it is installing, so I'm going to keep a close eye on this guy, looks like it just needed to wake up a little bit and warm up if you like, so we're still looking on track, we've just done the first reboot, and we're now back at a gray Apple screen with loading bar and no pink bars on the screen. I'm kind of, even though I'm standing up, I'm hypothetically on the edge of my seat because I just don't know how dodgy it is yet. Need to spend a little bit of time with the machine to get a feel for it. Um, if we can get an OS on here, that is an awesome start. So the entire thing has shifted over but we're not gonna worry about that because it's still going. I'm keeping an eye on it. Oh, guys, I think I'm gonna get on with this gorgeous 2011, I nearly said little then, <laughs> gorgeous little 2011 MacBook Pro 17 inch. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's got through the installer. The OS is on here, so this is just the setup. Uh, rebooted, fans have been whirring up and down. Might be a bit of dust in the cooling system. Um, didn't really think to look when we popped that drive in, but we'll be opening up this guy again soon anyway to put some proper drive screws in there and possibly upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs because why not? That'll be good fun. But let's just first of all select our language. We've got some beach balling here. I'll need to get into the OS to see if this machine is performing as it should, but I'm just like I have been through the whole process just 
being patient with it here. United Kingdom, there we are, continue. Okay, British on the keyboard, select. Now, I've been thinking with this Mac, do I sign into my iCloud account? Don't I, do I, don't I? Do I treat it like one of my machines? And you know what, guys? I am gonna log into this machine and treat it like it's gonna be a Mac I'm gonna use because I think this would be an ideal, if this ends up being reliable, this is gonna be an ideal system for me to run High Sierra on for my 32-bit apps. When I inevitably do upgrade to Catalina, there are currently three apps, one of which I use on what I would consider a regular basis, two of which I rarely use, but all three of them do not currently have a 64-bit version, therefore do not run under Catalina or any newer version of macOS that will be released in the future. So if I've got a machine like this that can run them, I will be happy. Because at the moment, if I install Catalina on my MacBook Pro, and that's the only OS, I don't really have another capable Mac that has an older operating system installed. Anything I've got other than that is going right back to sort of El Cap or somewhere around there. So I'm gonna log in. Keyboard is gorgeous on this thing. I always forget how nice it is. In my humble opinion, the keyboard's got progressively worse with the MacBook Pros. So the PowerBook G4 slash first, first generation MacBook Pro keyboard is like, absolutely amazing. These keyboards are also stunning and then the Retina keyboard is fine and then the Butterfly keyboards are just god awful so it's kind of weird how they've gone downhill over time but it's just feeling the deeper key travel on this really really lovely. So it rebooted itself after the fans went crazy. There's definitely something going on thermally with the machine. We will investigate further. If we can just get through the procedure of setting up that would be great. We'll remove this stick, we don't need it for now. Oh, would you look at that? Okay, so it failed at just sort of the last hurdle. So it's asking me to log in. And let's see what we get. We are here at the desktop. Okay, here we are. Let's turn the brightness up a little bit. Actually, no, I'm filming. Turn it down, it'd probably be more pleasant if I turn it down for you guys. I'm gonna get you guys a bit of a closer view. So this guy is hot, and the fans are running with us just sitting at the desktop here. But let's, before we even go and check the specs, I'm just gonna en enable zooming, as you guys know, as always. Don't need to explain once again, I don't think. Okay, zooming enabled. Let's check the spec on this guy. So we should be expecting a 2.4 gigahertz quad i7, if it's a late 2011. Ah, look at this. Okay, folks, so this is an early 2011 machine. So, MacBook Pro 17 inch early 2011, 2.2 gigahertz, 8 gigs of 1333 megahertz DDR3, and Intel HD graphics 3512 meg. So, this is exactly the same spec, I believe, as the MacBook Pro I had in college. It is the exact model. I believe that was a 2.2 gigahertz model. Let me just double check on Mac Tracker because I just need to need to know that right now, actually. Yes, guys, I did indeed used to have a 2.2 gigahertz 17 inch MacBook Pro. So this is exactly the same. So mega nostalgia for me. This spec is identical. That had eight gigs of RAM. The only difference is this will run a lot snappier than the one I had back then because I put an SSD in it, obviously. So let's just have a little look at everything else. It's showing the built-in graphics at the moment, 512 megs shared on the Intel 3000. Storage, this is the SSD that we put in, so 239 gigabyte. Available of 255. Memory, two four gigabyte sticks, it'll take up to 16. Let's delve in a little bit deeper in system report and have a look. MacBook Pro 8,3. L3 cache, six megs of L3 cache. Quad core, my gosh, what a beast of a machine. Here we go, graphics and displays. Now then, here is the culprit, the AMD Radeon HD 6750M with a beastly one gigabyte of VRAM. When I got this thing back in 2011, the college provided it for me and they did that because of my various eyesight conditions and that, so they deemed it necessary for me to have a laptop for me to do all of my work on, which was great because I did that in the last two years of school, but I was using a PowerBook G4 
but because I was doing a music technology course, the power book wouldn't cut it and it was kind of pointless having an underpowered laptop and then trying to use the college machines at the same time. So they just went all out and bought me a 17 inch MacBook Pro and it was exactly this spec. It was a beautiful machine, uh, but it was like no other Mac that I'd ever had before. The fastest Mac I, I had up to that point was my Mac Pro 2008. And this was just on another level compared to what I was used to. So, um, so I've just been fiddling around with this machine, making it my own with a few settings. And I've noticed that the fans are spinning up quite a lot and I'm getting some beach balling in that while working in system preferences and that. As you can see, the machine is still really responsive and really snappy. You know, if I open something, it's like bang, right there, you know, no questions asked. Um, but we might need to do maybe a little bit of a cleaning, a cleaning of the cooling system, reapplication of thermal paste and that. It's feeling quite hot considering it's not doing anything. But then again, these were always toasty machines. This is a Sandy Bridge machine. I remember mine was toasty. Um, one thing I'll do before I forget, because I always forget, I'm going to enable trim. Um, because we're using a third party SSD. Yes, yes, enabling trim, succeeded, your system will reboot. Okay, awesome. Now we'll do this, it'll start back up and then we'll run some more tests. So the machine has successfully rebooted. My lovely two year old, bless him, is having a little bit of a tantrum outside. So I really do apologize for the background noise that you may be hearing, but I want to show you guys every step, so uh, yeah, bear with us for the moment, folks. The weather's been a bit nasty, we've all been a bit cooped up. So, I'm gonna shut down this machine, and the plan is now to reset the SMC, and uh, maybe that'll contribute a little bit to helping with these issues with the fan spinning up and random spikes in high CPU usage and stuff like that. So, it's a good place to start. Okay, so, shift control, Shift control and alt. <laughs> He's really screaming, I'm so sorry. Hold the power button. There we have it. And a normal reboot of our Mac now. Lovely stuff, straight back up. And I'm gonna film this entire boot up process with no cuts, just so you guys can see how snappy it's being with this SSD in it. Nice thing about these newer MacBook Pros is yes, they're SATA, but unlike some of the earlier ones, this has a SATA 3 interface in it. In fact, it's got two. It's got one for the optical drive, one for the hard drive bay, so you can get full performance out of your SATA SSDs, which is really nice. So here we are, back in. Nice. After an SMC reset. Now I'm gonna shut down again. So now we are gonna reset the PRAM, command option PR, and power button. And I think this is a good time to mention that this will be a thing of the past soon. Come on, baby. There we go. The much louder bong afterwards. So reset SMC, reset PRAM, nice fresh install, nice new SSD. Well, I say new, new to this machine, freshly erased SSD then. And you can see nice snappy boot up process there. And we are in once again. Lovely. That um, key combination thing is gonna be a thing of the past with the Apple Silicon Max. They are gonna have a nice unified menu, apparently, where you can do all of the various tasks that you need to do on startup. I think the next thing I wanna do is just let it sit here, let it run. I've gotta go and cook some dinner, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm just gonna make sure that it doesn't go to sleep and stuff in the energy saver preferences. Get any updates downloading, um, maybe just put a YouTube video on and let it play it. I just want to let the machine settle in, let it all just burn in and see exactly where we stand with the graphics. Other than those initial pink bars that we saw when we booted up the machine, it's been absolutely perfect. I don't want to sort of, you know, I mean, touch wood. I just kind of think that it's behaving really well now. So I don't want to, um, I just want to see exactly what it's doing. So. That's what I'm gonna do and then I'll come back to you guys with an update. Okay guys, I've started a little test. What I've done is I've put on my network series. It's got autoplay switched on. So I've set the quality to 1080p and, <laughs> sorry about my camera work, I've got this little wiggler here. I've set the quality to 1080p. This is gonna keep going. I've muted the video and I've got some music playing via Deezer. So I'm just gonna 
let this run basically you might let it run all night see how stable the machine is and it's not much of a test but I don't really want to run like a CPU intensive or a graphic intensive kind of benchmark or stress test or anything like that I just want a little bit of normal use case scenario and that is just ticking away here rocking some video and audio so absolutely fine and I'll report back as soon as I have any kind of issues, if I have any issues. Hopefully we've just had some teething troubles and uh, we don't see any more issues from the, uh, the machine. That would be great, really, really great. So it's the next day, late morning, and I've let this machine run all night. Basically what I've been doing with it is playing my YouTube videos on autoplay, just going through my channel all night. It turns out that YouTube autoplay stops after a while, a little bit like Netflix when you're binge watching something and it says are you sure you're still watching or whatever. YouTube must have a similar feature because at some point during the night it stopped. But it can't have been that late because I was checking on it um, every couple of hours as I was waking up and whatnot. So um, the machine performed flawlessly just sitting here playing a video back in 1080p in Safari. I mean that only taxes about 15 to 20 percent of this CPU but still in my opinion it's kind of a good indication of a real world scenario in a way um, I'd never really sit here and watch hours and hours of 1080p YouTube and it's a good starting point for my testing anyway um, I'm installing some updates now one by one because I tried to do them all together and it just didn't want to do it nothing to do with the machine I don't think just App Store being App Store. I just wanted to draw your attention to the battery health here. I downloaded the battery health app and this is how we're looking with the battery. So Cycles, she's at 965 and nearly nine years old. Actually 22nd of June 2011. Yeah, she's over nine years old actually. So very, very old battery, original battery in this guy. If I, it's still actually surprisingly okay for its age. Um, this will hold a bit of a charge. If I unplug the charger, battery health estimates that I'll get about two and a half hours. So maybe I'll get sort of in the real world one and a half hours out of this battery or something along those lines. Obviously greatly depends on what I'm doing. But um, I was thinking if the machine is really stable and if I continue to use it and I don't get any really weird reoccurring glitches all the time, then I will splash out for a nice battery for this guy. I've looked online, I can get a nice, nice battery for about 90 quid. So it will be worth it. It will definitely be worth it. I didn't pay a penny for the machine and this is such a lovely MacBook. So 90 quid on a battery. I also need to buy a charger for it. So little bit of money and it'll be a gorgeous secondary backup machine. What I'm going to do today, and it's quite a good opportunity, in about an hour's time I'm going to be leaving to go to work and as you guys know I'm not officially working at the moment but I'm still overseeing any issues. One of our servers in work needs a new drive and I need to rebuild the array. So I'm going to take this machine with me to work and I'm going to do everything that I'd usually do on my main MacBook Pro, but as you can see, it's all hooked up into the setup and that it's a complete pain to unplug it and then plug it back in when I come back. So I'm going to leave it here and I absolutely need a laptop for what I'm about to do up there. So I'm going to take this guy and everything that I'd usually do on my normal MacBook Pro, I'll do on this guy. And the reason I want to do that is because, let's turn the brightness down because it's washing out the, the footage quite a bit. The reason I want to do that is because with my 2008 MacBook Pro and its various glitches, I could run it fine for days and days at home sitting on a desk. But as soon as you started moving the machine around, handling the machine, that's when problems started. So I want to take this out and about, and there's not a lot of opportunity at the moment. I'm taking a laptop out of the house maximum once a week at the moment, so not a great deal of opportunity. So today I'm going to seize it while I can and take this guy to work and see how it does. So I'm quite excited about that. I haven't had a 17 inch on my back for a very long time. Luckily, my main laptop backpack is a 17 inch capable backpack. So that's some good news. So I guess I'll see you guys in work when I'm sort of in the middle of using this machine. Okay, folks, first trip of the new MacBook and it's working really, really well. Everything is perfect. I've been taking it in and out of my bag, handling it. It's been sat on chairs, on tables, um, moving it around. It's just been absolutely brilliant. I've even had um, some people remotely working on this particular server that I'm working on at the moment. 
via team viewer using my machine and everything is going fine so so far so good Okay, so it's been eight days since I recorded that little clip in work and I took it to work that day and I actually didn't take the charger. I took the risk of not taking the charger and it did everything for me. So I was plugging a couple of drives into USB, erasing the drives. I had the machine hooked up to the network and I was managing the servers and changing settings and I did loads of stuff. And as I mentioned in that clip, I even had somebody remotely connect to my machine via TeamViewer and sat there for 20 minutes, 25 minutes doing a TeamViewer session. So. Um, it, it was great that day, absolutely great. And I've been using it at home since then for a few tasks. I've used it downstairs on my lap and I've used it up here on the table here on the server cabinet. Um, and it's been fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's a lovely piece of kit. It's very speedy, very snappy. All of the fan problems that we noticed during install haven't really been a problem since we reset the SMC. The fans seem to now behave normally pretty much. Um, the machine does get quite hot, but that's in its nature. It, it definitely isn't getting as hot as it was when I first got it. So it seems to have ironed out a few of those early sort of kinks that we were seeing. Um, but there are three problems that I'd like to list about this machine uh, to close up the video here. Now, just in case it wasn't clear, because I've just kind of gone through the edit here. And when I unboxed this MacBook Pro, I kind of neglected to mention, well, I've mentioned it in the video, but I was so excited to unbox it. I didn't mention to you guys that I was, I accepted this machine fully knowing that it wasn't functioning. Luke gave this to me in the hope that I would be able to sort of sort it out some way. And I expressed to Luke, I expressed to him that it would probably be too expensive for me to purchase a new logic board to put in the machine, but I will happily take a look at the machine as it is and make a video about it and add the machine to my collection. Um, and maybe one day I will be able to change the logic board if a logic board crosses my path that is a decent price. And he was okay with that, you know. So I want to mention to you guys and clarify that um, it's not like Lucas sent me a machine and I've suffered with a load of issues. You know, I knew that this guy was unwell. There was a story behind it. He got it repaired. And unfortunately, after the repair, um, he began to see issues quite quickly and then Apple wouldn't touch it again, unfortunately, which is a big, big shame because it's a gorgeous computer. Now, this has been running really nicely, but there are three problems related to this issue that I want to talk about. Um, or I, I guess they're all the same issue or round about the same issue. Um, first problem is quite random, and that is the machine doesn't seem to display proper power management especially around sleep. So you close the lid, the machine doesn't go to sleep. If you select sleep from the menu bar, it'll sleep for a little bit and then it'll just wake itself up randomly. And I've tried everything. I've done a good bit of Googling and, and had a look. Um, I've tried all of the techniques that are meant to make your Mac sleep properly again. But this guy, it doesn't like sleeping. It likes to be awake and working or it wants to be shut down. So speaking of shutting down, that's the second problem. This poor, poor MacBook Pro, and it's so rare. It's happened to me maybe three or four times. Unfortunately, it does suffer with random shutdowns. You'll be here and then click. The entire machine loses power. Something happens. It's like something shorts out and you just lose the machine. Completely gone. Black screen, click not even in a shutting down state, nothing. It just dies, absolutely dies. Then you can press the power button and it'll boot up just fine, but you get those random shutdowns. Um, obviously that makes it difficult to then depend on the machine because you could be halfway through something. It doesn't matter how often you save, you know, you know, you always know in the back of your mind that your machine could randomly shut down. So that is something. And um, yeah, I, it's happened three or four times, I'd say over the last, week. I've, well, I've owned this for like, say, 10 days now. So that's not bad because I've been trying to do a good few bits and pieces on here. Anyway, the third issue, the third and final issue that I've noticed is a very small one. It makes no difference, really. And I, I'm only noticing it because the machine isn't going to sleep, I guess, because I never shut down my other MacBook Pro. It gets shut down once in a blue moon. Um, this would be the same if it slept, but it doesn't. So um, when you start the machine up from cold, if it's been, say, 12, 15 hours and I press the power button. When it boots up, um, I get the purple lines on the screen and the Apple logo. It then freezes at that screen, 
restarts itself again automatically and then boots up with no purple lines and it boots up into the OS fine. It's about a kind of 90 second process where the machine is kind of getting its knickers in a twist and then it's right then. So, um, you know, that one is, is definitely obviously indicating a bit of unhappiness regarding the graphics chip there. It's like they changed the GPU and it's completely fine now, but it's just like there's a cold solder joint or something slightly amiss there. You know, it's it's like nearly there, you know, it nearly, nearly works flawlessly. And this is what Luke was saying in his email, you know, he was using it and it was sort of fine, but it's just a shame that it didn't fully work. You know, it, it nearly works, guys, it nearly works. So anyway, this is a beast. And to close out this video, what are my plans? Well, earlier in the video, I was talking about a RAM upgrade, talking about a battery, talking about a charger. I will probably look for a decent condition second-hand charger because chargers are still quite expensive from Apple. As you guys know, a MagSafe charger is not cheap. I think they're somewhere around 70 or 80 quid, maybe. Um, a battery. Uh, the battery in here now, you guys saw the health. It's very, very old. It's done a lot of cycles, nearly a thousand cycles. So it's not the healthiest battery, but it is nowhere near dead. You'll get a good hour and a half out of this machine if you unplug it from a charger. So at this stage, I'm also not looking for a battery. It may become, it may deteriorate very quickly now, this battery, now that it's seeing some use. Uh, I don't want it to sort of start bulging and expanding or anything along those lines. That would be horrible. So I may look for a battery for it at some point down the road. And RAM is so cheap that we can throw 16 gigs of RAM in here. So what I would really love in the future, and this is down the line, I'd love to make a video about this guy where we get some screws on that SSD so that it's mounted properly and we can remove that double-sided tape. We'll change the battery and upgrade the RAM. That would be a lovely little video to make about the machine. Um, but I'm not going to do that anytime soon just because those three things will add up cost-wise. So it's not going to be right around the corner. So please don't expect that. Um, in the meantime, who knows? I may stumble across on my late night eBay browsing. I may stumble across a good deal on a 17 inch logic board that's been refurbished or something like that. So who knows, guys? Who knows? But for now, I can safely say that this 17 inch MacBook Pro is a gorgeous machine to add to the collection. I've got a lovely little selection of Apple laptops now and this is just the icing on the cake. I don't really have a nice kind of flagship Intel Mac from a lovely little time period in the collection, so this is glorious. And something that I mentioned earlier on, it's the exact same machine that I used when I was in college, so it means a great deal to me. It is very nostalgic for me, and I've been loving using this guy. The resolution, my God. I know we have Retina displays today, so, it's nicer quality, but scaling wise, you know, just the amount of stuff that you can fit on here, screen real estate is amazing. It really is nice. And that extra two inches on the display as well. Glorious. It's a lovely workspace, gorgeous quality display, even by today's standards. So Luke, thank you so much for this donation. This is a mega donation. I still can't believe it. Quad core i7 17 inch MacBook Pro from the year 2011 absolute beast of a machine and as I say glorious to add to the collection really really lovely so Luke thank you so much buddy and remember guys Luke's Instagram is down in the video description if you're into retro gaming go and check it out as for the rest of you thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this lovely chunky tasty little rambly Mac video and as always I'll see you in the next one